Hello and welcome back to my home workshop. Um, this is going to be a slightly confused intro because I'm having to redo it from what I did days ago because of some sound issues. So forgive me if it doesn't sound like I know what I'm talking about. You're probably used to that if you watch this channel much though. Um, this episode is all about redoing my brake booster. Um, if you've built an EV, you'll know that you lose the vacuum from the engine uh, and so you need an electric vacuum pump, not one of those. Um, in order to generate the vacuum for your brake servo, unless you replace the servo with a fully electric one, like one from a Tesla. So in this episode, um, I'm going through the process of redesigning my setup for this, uh, using some 3D printed parts, etc. Um, I tried a variety of different approaches to this before I settled on the one that I've finished up with today. Um, that started with trying to design a um, a complete sort of reservoir and pump mount in one piece. Uh, and this is what it looked like in Fusion. Um, you can see if I delete the lid, you can see the pump in there. Um, it was a nice tight fit. And if I delete the pump and the lid, you can maybe see there's a hole. It's very hard to see because it's all black. But there's a hole going through there into a reservoir. And then I was going to mount a, um, so I was going to glue a piece of pipe in there. So this would be my reservoir. Um, in the end, that didn't work at all. Um, I'll show you the physical one now. There you go. I've just pulled this out of the uh, bin um, because I'd already filmed this uh, and <laughs> thrown it away. Um, but I'll do the same demonstration I did the first time around. If I uh, block this hole up here and blow into this hole, I don't know if you can hear that on the mic, but lots of air rushing out. Um, in short, um, this didn't hold air, didn't hold vacuum. I uh, could have printed it solid, um, but actually I just decided that the whole thing was probably a stupid idea. Version two looked like this. So what you can see here is a couple of different things. This is a Audi uh, vacuum reservoir um, in which I've removed the original um, barbed piece. It has a single barbed piece coming out of the top of quite a small diameter initially. I've swapped that for a, I think a nine or 10 millimeter, I, can't, I think it's 10 millimeter uh, T piece uh, that goes off there. And then I've created a, let me delete that. There you go. I've created a, a nice sculpted bracket um, that goes around the balls of the uh, reservoir. Um, and if we get rid of that, then you can see the pump mount. So this is going to be 3D printed in a PETG initially. Um, I will, at the moment, PETG is feeling fine and I think it's going to be strong enough. If it's not, uh, I can always swap to carbon fibre. Um, the joy of having the X1C. Uh, and if I put the buckles on there, I've called them buckles. Um, I've got two little brackets here just to make sure the pump doesn't go flying out the top uh, and the plan is just to put an o-ring around here or something so there's a little bit of rubber cushioning um, between the bottom of the pump uh, and the plastic mount and then all this um, bring those back again will mount onto a sheet of aluminium uh, as you'll see in a second and that sheet of aluminium is going to be um, screwed into the car uh, in that space I pointed out in a previous video so let's see these in real life, because I have printed them and they work. So there we go. This is it all printed. On the reservoir mount, you can see I've epoxied in some, well actually, I actually um, tapped um, the holes. So I made the holes to 5.5 millimeters and then tapped them and then epoxied in um, a couple of pieces of M5 thread to hold the um, reservoir on. Obviously there'll be some nuts on there to hold it down. Um, this is going to be screwed to this plate using some, this is overkill I know, but some uh, some 6mm um, uh, or M6 um, riv nuts, riv nuts there's the word. This will also be held on with riv nuts, again I've massively over engineered it, put like four holes in there. But even if the plastic, plastic breaks the, uh, the whole thing's not going anywhere because um, it's all screwed down. Here you can see the buckles, again just got some M5 um, inserts um, heat sunk into here um, just because they don't need an awful lot of tension 
just need to hold this down if you have any bumps or anything like that. I've also got printed a case for um, the controller. This is Johannes's. Oh, it actually clips almost too well. There we go. Um, this is a variation on the case I posted on the Open Inverter Forum ages ago for Johannes's control board um, that draws information from uh, this, which is a VW um, vacuum sensor. So there will be a, you'll see why in a minute, but there'll be an elbow here. The vacuum sensor is going to go something like this. You need to make sure it's the right way around because it does have a check valve in it. I can't remember which way the right way around is, but either there or like that. And then it'll come up around the bulkhead over here with a pipe that then runs straight into the brake booster. So this thing will also mount here. We'll need some holes drilling. I've got a horrible feeling the holes for this one aren't going to quite line up. Um, I'm not quite sure why. Um, then I need to run this um, 16 gauge um, cable into the fuse box uh, and terminate the grounds uh, over here. And I've got a ground cable that's going to come in and probably um, screw onto one of the mounting holes for this plate here. I've got to work, what, I've, what I've got to work out now is um, where the various mounting brackets go because I've not got an awful lot of place to screw this into. So let's go and look at the car. So the plan is for the mounting plate to go in here, about there probably. Um, gives enough space for the reservoir to hang off the bottom slightly if it needs to. Stops it vibrating on walls. Might need to bend, actually no we don't need to bend that out of the way because that's the old clutch pipe that isn't in use anymore. So I can just chop that off if needs be. But what I've got to work out is how to mount it here. There's a reasonably flat surface there, which has a hole in it that you never know. Might even be nine millimeters uh, or 10 millimeters, just enough for a uh, rivet nut, we shall see. That would be ideal. Um, might need to trim this down a bit so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, or even put a hole through and put a nut on the end of that won't really be a nut because they're very fat threads they're designed for those weird plastic nuts that hold the uh, sound deadening that I'm removing um, so yeah those could be part of the answer um, maybe don't know maybe I 3d print some little nuts to go on here and put a couple of brackets on a couple of bits of aluminium I shall have a think until the answer when I have it. go there's my solution you can see the prints got some sprung uh, teeth if you like sprung teeth sounds weird but you know what I mean I'm hoping that will go through the existing 20 meter hole in the bulkhead and then when tightened up grip and it won't be the strongest mounting point in the world but it'll give me one and it'll give me a reference point against which I can mark out some others and maybe work out a way to use those um, the existing mounts. Again, are they strong enough? Don't know. Maybe I'll weld something in at some point. But this might get me there. Let's give it a try. Well, that didn't work. By the way, I forgot to say the reason I'm not just uh, drilling a hole or anything um, is because there's a bunch of wires back there and I don't really want to have to relocate them. 
Um, but yeah, half my little grommet thingy is now inside the hole and unreachable with my fingers. Because uh, I designed it wrong and I had to take it off the uh, the big fat washer to fit it in. And uh, yeah, then I dropped it. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. the drawing board. I've just pulled my little plastic nut type thing out of the hole which means there's now <laughs> two of them stuck down there. I'm gonna have to find some way to dig in there and get those bits out. Um, the principle works really well. The design's close I think I just need to print it solid and reinforce it a little bit because um, it's not it's only been one of three mounts. I think it'll be fine. But yeah, just uh, while trying to fit this bracket and measure up, I just put a bit too much pressure on it and it just snapped straight off. So, redesign Mark III. But at least I've got the bolt this time, because I only had one of those left. <laughs> right, I'm in the backyard. This is my mounting plate for the brake booster. And I've just made up this little tab to go onto one of the old um, sound deadening mounts basically and I'm going to try these aluminium brazing rods see how it works I'll let you know in a sec hmm don't know they've done a great job there I can't see an awful lot of seam around here. I don't know how much has gone under and how much has gone on top. Got a bit too close to the map torch and actually started melting away the aluminium at one point. We'll let that cool down and we'll see if there's any sort of bond. Worst case, pull it off and use uh, just some adhesive. Just some initial thoughts. <laughs> Probably should have done some trials with this before I tried it on a real piece. Um, I didn't use any flux, that might have been a good tip. Um, I think next time I'll paint it all with flux. Um, it was super clean, uh, washed it all and then cleaned it all with acetone. So I don't think I got that wrong, but yeah, flux might have been a good tip. Well it ain't pretty, but it's fixed. That'll do. Next bracket's going to be 3D printed. Come off the bottom here. And I'll redo this one. We can get this in. Right, I'm going to wrap this video up with a little phone video. Um, it's not quite finished yet. Um, I've not bonded in that bottom left joint. Um, and I could probably do one top left as well. But it's pretty solid. It's all wired up, apart from not actually connected it through the bulkhead into the fuse box yet. Um, but the grounds are there, um, the sensor's wired up. It looks pretty good, I think. Uh, I'm reasonably confident it's going to work. So yeah, it's taken a long time. <laughs> and there's still a couple of iterations to go. But actually, yeah. Pretty happy with that.